I have a huge, ginormous, stupendous thrift haul for you today. Hi, I'm Tanya, the founder of freerangecottage.com. And here on our channel, I do a lot of thrift hauls. I do styling and we do we show our DIYs and gardening and things we're doing around the cottage here. Well, we also are deciding to open a flea market booth. We've had several in past years and did really well with them, but we're kind of going a little bigger this time and it's a lot of fun, but it takes a lot of going and sourcing great thrifted finds, vintage finds for the booth. So a lot of these today will be for the booth, but my favorites of course will stay right here and you'll see those later in my house tours and thrifted find tours. So right now I'm gonna show you some things. We went to an estate sale. You guys, this estate sale was out of this world. We went the first day on a Thursday, which we don't normally do. We tend to go on a Saturday. I go with my husband, Rob, and he's off on Saturdays. He happened to be off on this Thursday and we didn't realize <laughs> what kind of thrift sale, I mean, estate sale, sorry, this was, because this was a house of a collector and it was just packed with glassware, copper, brass, pottery, furniture, um, quilts. I can't even name all the things that this person collected. She sewed, she painted, um, it was just, so much and the things she collected were really beautiful they were really great quality but needless to say we got there right when it opened and so many things were already walking out the door i felt like i wasn't even going to get anything and plus the prices on the first day we're used to the half off saturdays and that's more my uh comfort zone with the price points but the things were so good that we went ahead and we did buy some things that Thursday and we went back on Saturday morning. So I'm going to show you the haul from both of those days. And also uh, we have done some thrift stores. So there'll be some of that mixed in too. So I'm going to go ahead and start with some of the wood and kitchen items. I've got sewing things, books, baskets, uh, quilts. I've got all kinds of categories of things. So they might not all be shown in categories, but I'm gonna, tr I'm gonna try. Um, the first thing is because I know I have my transferware lovers out there is this cute sugar and creamer. They're a little bit on the small side, but I got these the first day and they were $6 for the pair. So I didn't think that was too bad for a full price. There's no mark or anything on them, but I thought they were really beautifully done and just so cute. I mean, who could resist these for $3 a piece? So that was a great find. And I also found some transferware plates, the blue and white, the blue willow. And again, not marked. And these were $3.99 each. And actually there's two that were a little bit smaller size. I would say dinner size still. They're not a salad plate size, but then they, there were two larger ones. So you can see they're just barely bigger. And those were all $3.99 a piece, which I didn't think was a bad price. And those are, well, very likely stay at my house because I just love all the transfer wear and have some other pieces if you've seen my other thrift hauls. The next thing I found was a really pretty sort of uh, pedestal milk glass piece. And it's just in perfect, con perfect condition and it's so vintage and beautiful. This I went ahead and paid $10 for. That was actually the half price on the second day, but it's such a nice size piece and just really stunning. So I kind of couldn't resist on that one. Okay, as far as wood pieces, what do you think of my piggy? He was hanging on a wall. It is sort of a cutting board. I did pay the 15 and because he would have been gone by by Saturday. But I just think the patina on him is really, really pretty. And who doesn't need a pig cutting board? Actually, I would probably use this more as a 
decoration or to serve like charcuterie or something like that. I don't think I want to cut on it and scratch it all up. Um, another wood piece that I found that was just beautiful and I paid $6 for all three of these. These were half off on the Saturday. And they're these little duck bowls, I guess you would call them. You can see them up close there. A lot of carving in them. Here's the small one. Isn't that pretty? And I thought if you wanted to put them on a shelf in a grouping and, and take them apart or leave them stacked, they're just beautiful. And they all have a little bit of a different wood tone because I'm sure they are vintage and have been around for a while. So perfect for cottage style or boho or I mean, everybody is using wood. The wood is getting more and more popular, which I'm a fan of. And I also love painted pieces. So which go back centuries and centuries, they've been painting furniture also. So I love both. And you guys, I have my coffee today because this is a long haul and I think I'm going to need it. Okay, the next thing and I paid $6 for him, a carved duck. I think he's so pretty. And there's the full price on him, but I can't believe this duck was still around on the Saturday, but we did get there right when it opened. And so we were able to snag a few things. Um, okay, another thing that we think we paid maybe around $10. This is a handmade box, and I'll show you what's inside in one second, but you can see handcrafted by in the name of the person. So really neat and nice little brass clasp on there. And inside are a set of, these are definitely vintage. We looked these up, vintage dominoes and just a lot of fun. The whole set is there. And this was a Rob pick. And he's gone back and forth on whether he wants to keep this or sell it. We both really like it a lot. Um, a little wood cross I thought was really neatly crafted and that was $2. You can see that. You can see how it was put together there, pretty neat. And I don't usually buy frames. I believe I paid $2.50 for this. Yeah, I did. This was a half off on the second day. I don't usually buy a lot of frames unless I really love them. They either have to be like the real thick molding kind of frames, but I just thought the detail on this wooden one was really pretty. So I paid $2.50 on that. And that kind of speaks for itself. I got this little cabinet for, let me see, that was $11 half off. A little tiny spice cabinet or a puff carry cabinet. Nice little knobs, everything's just excellent condition. So that's a cute one. I'm Okay, I couldn't resist the rust on this piece and it's an L and we do have an L in our family, Luke, uh, my son, but I don't think he wants his name. He's a little old to have his name on his wall in his bedroom, but I thought I would just try to collect and find more of these uh, patinaed letters and end up spelling something. And this was $2, so love that. Always love my metal pieces. To a little more kitcheny stuff. This was just like a vintage barware piece that I'm gonna put in with those barware glasses. If you've seen any of my last thrift hauls, I thought it was cute and gives the uh, sort of mid-century vibe. And I paid a dollar on that. These were also a Rob pick. I can't get him to come over here and talk to you about it, but he just fell in love with these the first day that we went, but they were kind of pricey and kind of risky to get for the booth, but they are very stunning and beautiful. And I do like to have certain pieces for, I also have a blog and I like to experiment around with photography, with home photography and stuff. So I thought at Christmas or 4th of July or what have you, these are so pretty. These red goblets, they are vintage. There are, I believe nine of them. And I think we paid 20 for them on the, they were actually there on the last day. 
for half off. And then what's neat about it, hadn't seen, was that they have a matching pitcher that we paid 12 for. And I thought that was really, really stunning to have with those goblets. So I could see that using that in the summer again, here in the States, we do a lot of red, white, and blue through late June, July, um, for the, you know, 4th of July and stuff. And then around Christmas or in the fall, that would even be pretty mixed with amber glass. I think that would be beautiful. That red mixed with the amber glass would be really pretty in the fall. Along that same line, since we're on talking about the red, white, and blue, we found these two huge flags. I mean, they are, oh gosh, at least like a five by seven and they are vintage. And these were $15 a piece. We found two of them. And I thought these were just really stunning to hang up again through the summer in July or for in the booth, just um, as a prop over the summer backdrop. Uh, I thought they were really, really pretty. I've been kind of on the lookout for some vintage flags. I really like the look of that. Okay, so it must have been the time for glass pitchers because we found all kinds of really neat ones. Most of them will go in the booth. There's one or two that I have my eye on, but this was one that we found for six, I think it was $6, but it's a pedestal and it's very heavy glass, very thick, heavy glass. And I thought this would be great for lemonade or iced tea with limes and lemons in there. It'd be really beautiful to be able to see everything that you put in there. And it's a bigger pitcher, so sort of party size. These are a little bit smaller. This one I paid eight, but it is a heavy cut glass there. And I mean, this thing's heavy and it's just beautiful. I don't know if you can see how it reflects the light but that one we kind of fell in love with. And these pictures are so multifunctional. We can't seem to get enough of them because you can put flowers in them. You can, you know, serve drinks or water in them. And so it's nice to have a couple on hand and they're really pretty for even just decor in a hutch or on a shelf. So we love that. And then I paid 10 for this hobnail one. Isn't that just stunning, that glass? Now, do I wish it was milk glass? Of course, but it's kind of fun to have the clear because like I said, you can put fruit or something in your drinks and make it really beautiful or even just water with lemon and mint in there. That Maybe I would drink more of my water if I would put it in such a pretty vessel like that. I think that would make me want to grab my water more often. This one is a favorite and it's the amber. And it was funny because Rob was holding this up. I paid eight on that one. He was holding this up right before I started filming and said, maybe we keep this one <laughs> because it is very stunning in person. Super pretty. I did manage to get a few copper and brass pieces, but really um, there was so much more that I wish I could have grabbed, but hey, there were a lot of people there. So but there was a lot of stuff to go around too. It was a little crazy. But this is a copper kettle I paid 11 for and it's got the blue and white on it. And I thought it was in really nice shape, very pretty. So that is one piece. And this is the copper mold I paid $4. But this is not your typical, um, you know, you'll see the aluminum ones that are kind of have the painted copper on. Uh, this one is heavy and thick. So somebody that is a copper collector and are hanging it up, this would be a nice addition. So that will likely go in the booth, even though I, I do like it quite a bit. I did find a couple of small copper pots and you can see the handle on these is fantastic with that brass finish on it. So how pretty would that be hanging? in a French country kitchen or a cottage kitchen. And here's the second one. And I paid seven on the big one and uh, four or five on the small one. 
And I'm debating whether to really clean up that copper and make it bright or leave the patina. I kind of like the patina. So I will likely leave that. And there's the handle close up. That is just beautifully done. And they're, they're pretty heavy also, which is what we always look for in pots and pans. We like them to be a little bit heavier weight and the stainless rather than aluminum. But now if they were just for decoration, it wouldn't really matter. I just thought this was a very pretty little pottery piece, 75 cents. But you can see the detail on it. Really pretty, no mark on it, but it's a terracotta and the, the blues in it are really beautiful. These glasses were uh, about $2.50 a piece, which was a little pricey, but they are so vintage and gorgeous. The colors for spring. So you can see there was a pink. There's this really pretty yellow. There is a green. I love that green. It's sort of that jadeite green. And there were three blue ones. Really pretty, almost, I want to say robin egg blue, not quite as turquoise as that, but very pretty for spring, three of those. So just the pastel colors on those and with, with all the spring holidays and everything coming up, I couldn't really resist those. And like I said, we did find a couple of brass pieces. I look for brass candlesticks and pieces that are sort of unique. And this little box was really pretty. I did pay probably too much for it. I paid 16, but it is heavy and solid. And I thought it'd be a beautiful little jewelry box. Some people like to burn incense. You could even put a small candle in there in a jar or something and let the lights illuminate or like battery operated lights. But I just thought it had so many good qualities about it that I went ahead and grabbed that. And then Rob, again, another Rob find, he, he found this pocket change. He likes to have somewhere to throw his change on his nightstand. This thing's heavy. I think this is solid brass. It's, it's just a beautiful, beautifully done piece and definitely probably vintage. It's got someone else's, um, letters on there. What am I trying to call that? I can't think of initials, but monogram. That's what I was trying to think of, but it doesn't matter. It's fine with us and he can throw his extra change in there. And I paid, I think he only paid one or two dollars. Okay. I paused for a sip of coffee. Are you ready for some more? I have some really pretty farmhouse finds coming up. Some books, of course, some art, some my sewers are gonna love oh my quilters especially you're gonna love what i found and even some quilts blankets baskets and a piece of furniture that i am so excited about and it's in my kitchen it's back over there on the wall and i'm going to show you that at the end so i don't know if you saw my last thrift haul that i found a beautiful apothecary style china cabinet that I'm going to do a little bit of updating on and put right in my own dining room here. I've been looking for one for quite some time. Well, imagine how excited I was when I found this big apothecary jar at that estate sale and it was $4 and I snagged, I grabbed that. I had a stool in one arm because most estate sales, you can usually get a bin. They'll put it by the checkout. There's bins. So you can just go put your finds in there and you can keep shopping. This was not the case. There were so many people and they had one table, but it was already packed with things that people were saving. So we literally had to carry things around. So I had this in one arm. I had a stool, a stool slung on my other arm and had to look that way. I mean, you needed about six more hands to be able to grab all the things you wanted. But um, speaking of stools, I did pick up some really cute ones and these were all on half off day. So I was really happy to see these still there. 
and I paid anywhere from, I think $3 on up to just about four. Now my other find, and this was actually at the thrift store, was these little apothecary jars. How exciting! And these are, these were originally from Hobby Lobby. I paid $2.50 a piece for these. And I don't, I don't hate what's in this one, but I don't know that I will keep this stuff in them. And I'll definitely take these labels off. It, it says Botany Blend or something. It's just a cheapy looking label. But I found that one. I found this one. And I don't mind what's in this one either. So I might end up keeping those, I don't know. And I found this one. This is the one that it's kind of a mix and I wouldn't, I don't mind what's in there if it was in a bowl or something, but I don't know that I want to keep it in this jar. But each of those were $2.50 and they're going to look beautiful on my apothecary cabinet when I'm all done. So I was really excited about those. Now, along the farmhouse lines, I found this beautiful crockery. I always grab crocs when I can find them. I paid five on this and no mark or anything, but just a really pretty and nice size. This would be a good size for wooden spoons. You can see it would go really nice with my wood back there. <laughs> so I'm sure I will find something to use that for. This is a really unusual piece, but I just liked it a lot because it's a metal candle holder. It's heavy. I don't know where it could originally be from, but it's got kind of a hammered finish on it. And I liked it as is, or if you paint it, and I thought it's a nice long one, which would be really good on a table. And I was really thinking of outside on a patio table this summer to have some little, maybe even little citronella candles or something on there. Thought that would be really cute. And I cannot remember what I paid for that. I'm sure it was not over $5. It was at the thrift store, but it's a heavy solid piece. Very, very nice. This is a little bit unusual. It is something that hangs on the wall. It actually hangs on the wall and has brackets. And I just liked the shape of it for, again, it's got the shelf. Again, I always think of a plant. I thought about either painting it. I don't want it to, I probably don't want it white because it's already got kind of a feminine shape to it. And if I do it white, it'll get really almost too sweet. You know what I mean? But I really, I don't mind the dark color on there, but I also thought about, I have a rust finish kit. I also thought about kind of getting a rust finish on there would be so garden pretty. And this would be really pretty. I have a shed or if someone has a patio, I'm not sure if this is going to the booth or not. I haven't decided but I paid $6 on that and it's a nice big size. And I know you guys have all kinds of ideas for the different pieces that I'm holding up and you tell me some of those in the comments and it's a lot of fun because we can all get creative and think about different things we would do. And a lot of times you guys think of things that I don't think of, which I love. I love bouncing ideas off of each other. So of course, you know, <laughs> I ended up with some books I don't know what my problem is with books lately, but I've been finding some really amazing vintage books and they're hard for me to let go of, but I found this set. I don't usually buy um, encyclopedias, but these were so pretty. Look at the color. They're from 1947 and look at the cover on that. All the embossing on there and they're even have beautiful illustrations. Some of them are in color, black and white. They're, they're really nicely done. And look, if you stack some, let's see, I've got a couple here. And I think there were 30 of these and I did pay 20 for those because I thought I would get a lot of mileage out of decorating with those and or, and or put them in the booth. I haven't decided yet. You know I love black and white, so it's hard for me to let go of that. <laughs> Sony like a hoarder. Oh, this one. I'm so excited about this one, you guys. I have looked for, now I didn't look online and I, you know, I didn't want to pay retail. It was just something thrifting. You know, you kind of have your little tick list in your mind. Like if I ever find at the right price. So this was $6, which I thought was a great deal for this huge book. And it's all about 
seashells and I'm a kind of a seashell addict. Having grown up on the coast, I just wanted something that identified the different shells and had good either illustrations or pictures. And this seems to have both. And you can see even without the dust jacket, it's really pretty too. And it's a nice size sort of coffee table book. So it's funny because I'll put books like this on my coffee table and pretty much my oldest son is the only one that grabs them and looks through. <laughs> He's kind of a book nerd like I am. And then I found, these were from the thrift store. That was from that estate sale. I mean, I'm telling you, these people had some really neat stuff. And one of the piece of furniture I'm gonna show you is from there, the estate sale also. Um, this was The Spirit of St. Louis, and that was published in, I know it was really, 1953. It has some stickers on it, but I'm gonna be able to get those off. So I went ahead and got that. That was $2 at the thrift store which I've been paying between 50 cents and a dollar for um, vintage, you know, just single books. Um, this one's the Oregon Trail. Again, really nice patina, pretty green color. And it was from 19, I know it was the, I thought it was 1955, that's right. I thought that was a neat, a neat one. Now, um, These next two pieces are some original artwork, which is one of my favorite things to find when we're out thrifting or when we're um, at estate sales. I just love these pieces. I think it really, not that I don't like some mass, produ mass produced art. You know, I, I don't, I'm not like an art snob or anything, but I love the idea that you can find original pieces at like a tiny little price. So we went to this estate sale and there was a garage sale a couple streets over on the way out and we went ahead and stopped. And these pieces are from Mexico. It was a Mexican artist. Get the, the ring lights kind of getting that. And they look like pastels, but they're almost too detailed. And the woman told us, this was at this garage sale. She told us that her grandfather had bought these at least 40 years ago when he was in Mexico and then he had them, had them matted and framed. And they're really well done. I love the color of the mat. Look how nicely done these are. They're beautiful. And so we got that and a rug. I think we paid hmm, maybe $8 a piece for these and they're they're definitely they're they're definitely vintage and just beautiful and original art i there is a signature but i can't read it maybe any of you know that artist or maybe it was just a small artist that was in one of the towns down there i missed this cabinet earlier this is a pretty nice size cabinet you can see again just in that raw wood and I paid, oh, about $12 for it. And you can see it's inside here. It does have a shelf and a drawer. The shelf fell down on me, but it does have a shelf and a drawer. But that was a fun find. They had just so many, I can't even explain how many things they had in that house. <laughs> I don't know how it all fit when they were living there. I'm gonna run through some really neat baskets that I found. This was a basket tray, and that was the thrift store, and I'm looking at my price. That was $4.94, so you know it was Goodwill if it's a weird price like that. But it's a good size tray. I always love square baskets. Uh, this was just a vintage feeling basket from that estate sale, $4 and very nice handle it's in really good shape pretty this one i love it was six dollars it's one of those stairs baskets but again it's got a nice patina on it i'm tempted to keep that on my stairs <laughs> because so many things end up downstairs that need to go upstairs but my absolute favorite vintage basket find and i paid 16 so it was right there at my limit was this 
big one. Oh my gosh, I'm in love. I have been looking for this style. I see them a lot in flea markets for, gosh, 75, 60, 75 dollars. And this is just so beautiful. And that's going right in my living room. I already know where it's gonna go. Next, I found this absolutely beautiful vintage oval mirror. It's a nice size, it's heavy, and the gold on it is just perfectly patinaed and I won't paint or touch that at all, just clean it up a little and that will go in the booth. It's a beautiful piece. If I had a place to keep it, I would love it. I also found some quilts. I found these pillow shams. These were $3 for a pair. So the blue and white I thought would be, is so fresh for the summer. And everybody loves their blue and white over the summer usually. There's one and there was not any kind of stains or issues on them. Very, very pretty. Nicely done. Then I found this quilt and I just love all the past, almost pastel colors in it. Of course, blues and greens and pinks. And I paid $7.50 for that. And it's in very nice shape. Also, I found three of these little throw pillows. These are for my boho lovers. I could just see this with a lot of plants and wood and just how everybody's doing such an organic sort of global kind of look. This reminds me of a sari, but it has three of the throw pillows and it comes with a beautiful coverlet. You can see all the detail and there's even little mirrors in there. Oh, I mentioned the, the wooden stools that I got. I also got a really cute little nightstand that has the caning in it. And it was just a single nightstand, but I thought it had such a cute shape. And I paid 20, I believe for that. I also, this is from that same garage sale where I got the artwork. We got this, um, really farmhousey looking braided rug and you can see it's got blues and greens in it and that I love of course I may use this in the booth or I may find somewhere here to use this not sure on that one yet but that was a really great deal um we paid probably eight dollars for that and along the same lines with the quilts I found this chenille blanket I haven't even gotten into it yet I paid around $20 for it, but these chenille blankets can be quite pricey. And it's got beautiful fringe on it, you can see. It's, it's in almost like new condition. And it looks like it's either a queen or a king. Let me try and take it out here. I honestly don't even know what all I have in here because, like I said, it was so chaotic that I couldn't pull this all out and look at it. There were wall to wall people. But yes, it is excellent condition. Look how pretty that is. Oh my gosh. I'm excited about this one. I don't know if there's anything more vintage, cottagey, farmhouse than a chenille blanket especially over the summer. It even smells like freshly laundered. It even smells good. This has got to be a king, it's huge. And I have a king bed, so what do you know? It fits. My quilters, you're going to understand this. This square, 50 cents. This roller, easy roll, $1.50. Omnigrid, $1.50 bigger one was four. They're saying four, but I don't remember paying four. I think it was just a couple dollars. And 
the square up 250. I know you're screaming right now if you've priced these. <laughs> um, quilters cut and press too, four dollars. So it's got the cutting board on the one side and the pressing on the other. Love that. That would really, really come in handy with making quilts. I've made quilts several times. I wouldn't say I'm an avid quilter. I haven't done it in a while, but I have even taken some quilt classes and I've even sold some quilts, but that was quite a few years back. But I did want to start getting back into a little bit of that. So I'm going to go quickly through this. The same Goodwill that I found the other fabric in was having pretty much half off of all the fabric and a lot of the trims and such. This blue ruffle trim, I think I paid $5 for all of that, $4 for all the yellow. This huge piece of fabric. I mean, this could be a quilt back. This could be turned into a blanket, a poncho. I was thinking about um, Free People. Have you heard of Free People? The uh, clothing line has a really kind of funky poncho with a hood. It's like a pullover. Super cute. I thought this would make great, um, make a really cute poncho. For that whole length of fabric, I paid three or four dollars. I did not pay much for that at all. And again, these, I paid four dollars for this bundle. I haven't even gotten into a lot of them yet. You can see there's some good pieces in there. And then I went ahead and got, uh, this was three fifty. Went ahead and got some that were like this because I think that would make cute kids quilts. Really easy to just make out of squares, nothing elaborate, but both of my grandkids love blankets. So I thought it would be fun to just put some together, especially when I can get the fabric that cheap. This bundle was $3.50 and some good lengths of fabric there. I really liked this little floral there. It looked kind of vintagey. And last fabric, it says quilting squares and these were three, a little over three. But I'm wondering how many squares I've got in there already. And that would be a cute quilt too. The second day I went back, I almost, or on Saturday when things were half off, I almost forgot all about this. I wanted these half off and they were still there. They were actually sitting in her garden beds and nobody was buying them. And they are these huge conch shells. Are these not gorgeous? If you like seashells like I do, you're gonna like these. I haven't even cleaned them up or done anything. They were sitting in dirt actually, but these were a dollar a piece. And I think I got, eight or ten of them so i'm really excited i'm on the lookout for a really big dough bowl i just want to stack these in the dough bowl for the summer on my either coffee table or dining table and i think they'll just be beautiful i absolutely love seashells i know it's a weird thing but I just really like their form and most of them are white or pinks or tinges of blue and stuff. They're very um, subtle in their coloring, so pretty. And all every one of them is different. This piece was $4. Now I don't know that I will keep the little, it's like a bell and a little um, bumblebee, but I think I'm gonna take that off, but this is just such a pretty piece. I thought it was so unique. I like delicate jewelry, but I also tend to lean towards chunky turquoise and a little bit um, more heft to it. And especially if it's not fine jewelry, it's just um, high fashion jewelry. I just love to make a statement with it. The next piece I found was this turtle with the stone in it here. And I, feel like this may be real leather on the bracelet part and you can adjust your size there and my wrist is really small so it's nice that I can adjust that look how fun that is that makes a real statement doesn't it it's a lot of fun and this piece oh I just absolutely love this cuff 
I wish I could wear even bigger cuffs, but I can't. I can only get away with about this size because of my wrist size. But isn't that so, so pretty? Oh, I love it. I love it. I mean, imagine with just like a cream colored sundress, which I have that I thrifted over the summer with some gorgeous uh, vintage looking gold like that. Ah, oh, I love it. I love it. So that's fun. I guess I'm a romantic at heart, right? The next thing I found was this adorable little camo jacket. This is for my granddaughter. And it's a little camo jacket and it's got little butterfly um, patches all over it, embroidered patches. There's quite a few of them. Let's see, see if I can find all of them. Aren't those cute? And that was $4.50. And I said on the jewelry, I paid $4 for each piece on that. And then I actually found a cute little shirt. This was, I think, $3.50 maybe. But I thought it was just so pretty, the detail on the sleeves. It's, it's open behind this lace, so it's sort of that cold shoulder look without exposing so much skin, you know, like the, your whole arm. So I thought this was be really cute for spring. And the last thing I found was this fo fossil wallet. It's in like this soft gold. But what I like about it is it's one of these wristlets and it's in really excellent condition. And what did I pay under $6? No, because red was half off that day. I paid $3 on that and everything works. I mean, I feel like they didn't even use this wallet that much, but I like the idea of putting my stuff in there and just, you know, putting it on my wrist when I'm going into stores because I have kind of a bigger purse and it gets, uh, it gets to be a pain. So love that find. So let me know if you want more of these clothing and accessory kind of hauls. Um, this is a lot of fun and let me tell you guys, I, we homeschooled our kids. We have three kids and I only worked part-time or I would have my own side business or something, but I really had to conserve and there were years that went by that I never stepped foot in a clothing store for myself. I thrifted every bit of my clothes and I feel like I was able to find really good basics um, without spending the amount that I would in a retail store. Now, these days I can shop sales and different things. I know certain stores to go to and look for the sales or get a coupon or what have you. And I can get those prices down really well these days. Um, but I still like to look through the thrifted because a lot of times you can find really well-made garments for a lot less money. You just kind of have to start um, looking at how garments are constructed and the fabrics and stuff. If you're not familiar with that stuff and just familiarize your stuff yourself and then you can find some great thrifted buys on clothing and accessories. Now I'm going to show you my last find here. This is a beautiful piece and I found it in the sewing room of this estate sale. I had been looking for something to put on this wall and it couldn't be too deep. It had to be kind of shallow, but I really wanted extra storage for dishes and possibly linens and things like that. So this piece is solid wood and I paid $1.75 for it. We bought it. The fly can't hesitate. You have to know what you're looking for and you've really got to jump on it and then you'll find some of your best things. So I hope you guys have had fun with this thrift haul. Um, we always have fun going out and finding all the treasures and especially sharing them with you. I will show you a lot of this stuff in the booth coming up. After that, there are going to be a lot more DIYs. There are some things we've got to get done around here. Our garden, our vegetable garden, our flower gardens, all the things that probably most of you are heading into doing also. And of course, a lot of styling and 
hopefully more room tours as we were kind of a work in progress here. Even though we've lived here 16 years, I have some things we're putting up shiplap and different things on the walls. So I'm kind of uh, waiting to show you the finished rooms until we get a few things done. So subscribe if you haven't and I will see you next time. And thanks so much for joining in the fun today and visiting with me. And we'll see you next time at Free Range Cottage. Mm -hmm.